In the same way that there are different modes of production that provide different ways of making movies, there are also three different modes of cinema. What we might think of as three different ways of using movies as a form of media that all involve presenting different kinds of content to audiences, as well as using filmmaking techniques to address audiences in different ways and towards different ends. The three modes of cinema are narrative cinema, which produces narrative films, documentary cinema, which produces documentary films, and avant-garde or experimental cinema, which produces avant-garde films. The things that characterize these different modes of cinema and that differentiate them from one another are the kinds of content that they include, their goal in making movies, the industrial context in which the movies are produced, distributed, and exhibited, narrative films and documentary films are produced and distributed by entirely different companies, and the studios that produce narrative films and the distributors that distribute narrative films only produce and distribute narrative films, while the ones that produce and distribute documentary films only produce and distribute documentary films. Avant-garde films, as we will see in our next video, are produced, distributed, and exhibited entirely outside of the film industry and outside of any industrial context. The final thing that separates the three different modes of cinema is the way that they use the elements of film form and filmmaking techniques to present their content to viewers. There are only a set number of ways that you can write, stage, shoot, edit, and add sound to movies, and all movies, regardless of whether they are narrative films, documentary films, or avant-garde films, use the same filmmaking techniques to do this. They just use them in slightly different ways. Narrative films tell stories. Those stories can either be stories that are entirely fictional, or stories that are based on real events. But either way, those stories are scripted and staged. In other words, even the movies based on real events don't show us those events as they actually happened, but instead follow a script written by a screenwriter, staged by a director, and performed by actors. Narrative films, whether Hollywood movies or independent movies, have two goals in making movies. First, to make money, since narrative filmmaking is a business, and second, to provide entertainment to audiences through the stories that they tell. Narrative films are produced either by Hollywood movie studios or independent film studios, and they are made for commercial theatrical release, as well as for distribution and exhibition in ancillary markets. Finally, narrative films use elements of film form to tell stories and to communicate thematic meaning through those stories. Because the focus of this course is on narrative cinema, and almost all of the movies that we watch for class are narrative films, this week we are going to give some limited consideration to the other two types of cinema. This video covers documentary cinema, and the next one covers avant-garde cinema. Documentary films profile real-world people, events, or issues. They are not scripted, and they involve little staging beyond decisions about where to place cameras during filming, or, if interviews are included as part of the content, where those interviews will be filmed. There are some documentaries that include staged reenactments of events referred to in the film for which there is no actual footage of the event available. In those cases, the footage is clearly identified in the documentary as a stage reenactment, and those reenactments don't take any liberties with the historical records or witness testimonies on which they are based. Documentaries are made primarily to educate and inform audiences about whatever their topic is. However, they are also made for the purposes of persuasion, and we are going to come back to that point in a minute. Documentaries are produced by independent film studios that specialize in documentary filmmaking, 
and by TV networks or streaming services. In fact, PBS and a handful of cable networks such as HBO, the National Geographic Channel, and the Discovery Channel, to name just a few, are the biggest producers of documentaries in the United States, alongside Netflix. Finally, documentary films use elements of film form to organize and communicate information about their topic to audiences. But they also use elements of film form to try to persuade audiences to see that topic in a particular way or to adopt a particular point of view on it. This is a very important aspect of documentary filmmaking, so we're going to take a minute to consider it in a little more detail. Documentary films do not simply record reality. All documentaries make use of filmmaking techniques to represent reality in a particular way that is meant to influence our view of the topic. In other words, documentaries provide us with information about the world around us, but they also provide us with a specific viewpoint on that information that they encourage us to adopt. So in both watching documentary films in your everyday lives and in studying documentary cinema within the context of this class, we need to do away with the myth of documentary objectivity, since there is no such thing, and few documentaries actually make any claims to being objective in their exploration of their topics. Because of this, we need to also take a minute to make sure that we have a clear understanding of the difference between perspective and bias. Perspective is another term for point of view. It is a particular way of regarding and understanding an issue, an event, or an experience. Bias is prejudice in favor of or against one thing, person, or group compared with any other. And that's the actual dictionary definition. That's not a definition that I came up with on my own. Documentary cinema is not a form of journalism. So documentary films are not required to provide us with information about every aspect of their topic, nor in the case of documentaries about social issues, are they required to give equal time or emphasis to presenting both sides of those issues? Not doing either or both of those things does not make a documentary biased, since again, documentaries are not required to be objective. They are just required to be truthful. In other words, to only provide true and accurate information about their topic and to make a case for the perspective that they support on that topic while avoiding endorsing lies, misinformation, prejudice, or hate. As with narrative films, documentary films have different genres or types of documentaries. For example, nature documentaries, which explore aspects of the natural world, historical documentaries, which examine historical events, and portrait documentaries, which profile a particular person or a group of people, are all documentary genres. There are also specific techniques used to make documentaries that are sometimes also used to classify them. For example, a talking head documentary is a documentary that is primarily made up of interviews with either experts on the topic of the documentary or people who are either witnesses to or participants in the events that the documentary examines. Compilation films are documentaries that are made up primarily of archival footage, most commonly historical documents, photographs, or news footage that dates from the period contemporaneous with the subject of the documentary and that provides a historical record of it. While direct cinema, or cinema verite documentaries, are made up of footage that captures the events that make up the subject of the documentary as they are happening. They're documentaries that are filmed live while the events are going on. Although there are some documentaries that use only one of these techniques, there are also quite a few that use all of them in combination. While we are on the topic of documentary filmmaking techniques, there is one final clarification that we need to make about documentary cinema, 
and that is the difference between documentary films and mockumentaries. A mockumentary is not a type of documentary. It is a narrative film that uses documentary form to present fictional subject matter as a pseudo-documentary. So while they use documentary techniques to film their content and present it to audiences, the content of mockumentaries is still scripted and staged, and the films themselves are fictional films made for entertainment purposes that do not make any claims to be an actual documentary or to represent actual people or events. Mockumentaries are a very popular genre of narrative film. Christopher Guest has directed a number that have become cult classics, including This is Spinal Tap and Best in Show. More recent mockumentaries include Borat, directed by Larry Charles, and What We Do in the Shadows, directed by Taiga Watiti. There have also been a number of recent TV mockumentaries, including The Office, Parks and Recreation, and the FX adaptation of What We Do in the Shadows. Because we are only going to be spending a little bit of time examining documentaries in this course, and because we are only going to be watching and analyzing one documentary film, it is also important for us to take a minute to acknowledge that documentary cinema has a long history that extends back to the very early days of movies. In fact, documentaries were among the first movies ever made. They also play a significant role in cinema as a whole, as well as in terms of their contributions to cinema history.